It's great to be here. I want to thank you for having us today. I'm proud to be the Chancellor of the State University of New York. So I have the privilege to come before you today on behalf of the State University of New York to comment on the 2011-2012 executive budget. We are the largest system of public higher education in the nation. We have 64 campuses, 468,000 students, a current workforce of 88,000 faculty and staff. Uh, I'm asked and reminded 20,000 retirees who still commit themselves to SUNY and nearly 8,000 programs of study and 3 million alumni, most of whom live and work in New York. So it should be no surprise that the boost that SUNY provides New York in economic impact is remarkable. For every state dollar we receive, SUNY generates $8 in total spending. We have a state economic impact in the billions, and our role stretches from a convener of the mines to one of the most significant economic engines of our time. We're not only the most comprehensive higher education system of its kind in the country, we believe we are, and we hope you believe as well, one of New York's greatest assets and, of course, one of New York's largest employers. Of the many conclusions that will be made throughout the budget process, one to me is unwaveringly clear. The past, the present, and the future of New York State is uniquely tied to its state university, and that's a partnership we stand willing and able to push to new heights. We've created a network of regional tech transfer hubs in partnership with the SUNY Research Foundation. These hubs are helping us translate SUNY research into remarkable products and services, finding new ways to make our investment in brain power return tangible benefits to the people of New York. Our faculty, along with many partners, brought to New York over a billion dollars in grants for sp sponsored research this past year. Thousands of our faculty and students are participating in these grants and putting New York back on the map as the center of innovation. And perhaps most impressive today is their courage and maturity in taking a stance on tuition. Their demand for a rational tuition policy should make us all confident in their ability to provide the next generation of leadership for New York and the world. When it comes to access and affordability for students, our state university is simply number one. And that's a title we have no intention of ever giving up. Just as Governor Andrew Cuomo characterized New York State, higher education also stands at a crossroads. Less public investment, greater public demand, and rapidly shifting economic sands require us to be increasingly agile. SUNY is strong, but it is not invincible. With a negative impact of $1.1 billion over the past three years and the potential for that figure to reach $1.5 billion with the enactment of this executive budget, SUNY's ability to provide the breadth and quality of its programs and services is obviously threatened. We have to be much more forthright about our belief that as SUNY goes, so goes New York and vice versa. We have also learned that, that we are quite fortunate to have a new partner in Governor Andrew Cuomo, whom we believe will be a staunch advocate for our great university system. We're excited about his leadership. He has recognized already that SUNY plays a significant role in the revitalization of our economy because we are the university for the state of New York. Access is perhaps the most important gateway to enhanced quality of life for our students and their families and the pathway of professional success. Individuals who enter the workforce with a two or four year degree have more successful careers and earn higher salaries than those who lack them. Our welcome mat must extend from Niagara Falls to Montauk Point, and to achieve this in the midst of our economic crisis is a daunting task. 
Number one, we must cut the red tape that is strangling SUNY's procurement of essential goods. If our hospitals cannot quickly purchase the life-saving tools they need, if our campuses cannot provide our students with the educational tools they need in a timely manner, then we simply cannot do our jobs efficiently. The hurdles we face in the procurement of goods force us to spend more taxpayer dollars and to fall behind in our promise of excellence to New Yorkers. Number two, we must allow SUNY to enter into public-private partnerships with more cost-efficient and growth-oriented regulatory reform. We know that these reforms will advance our core mission and values and that they can, at the same time, protect collective bargaining rights. It's essential that we attract the interest of the private sector while simultaneously protecting the interests of the public, allowing us to generate additional revenue and create the jobs our state so desperately needs. So while we certainly applaud the governor for his courage to face our current budget crisis, I have to say for the record that after years of significant cuts to SUNY's operating budget, many are concerned, including students and faculty, about the university's continuing ability to provide access to a quality education. Yet the state's economic reality cannot be ignored, so in an effort to balance support <coughs> for our critical mission against the economic realities of our time, we must at the very least begin a genuine and productive discussion regarding the state's long-term commitment to the State University of New York. This year's budget proposal completely eliminates what was left of their state support, $179 million. Factor in $25 million in increases in state retirement, bill and a yet-to-be-determined level of Medicaid cuts, conservatively estimated at $30 million, and we're looking at an impact of approximately $209 million in the upcoming year, bringing the four-year impact to just three hospital facilities to over $700 million. A cut of this magnitude will have a devastating impact on the hospital's ability to deliver, to deliver critical care to over one million patients per year, educate New York's future healthcare workforce, and continue to be major employers in their communities. I urge reconsideration of this approach to the SUNY hospital subsidy. Number five, we must also take this opportunity to ask you to consider restoring at least some of the massive reduction of state ed aid to SUNY's community colleges and state-operated institutions. In the governor's budget, community colleges were cut by $226 million, $226 per full-time equivalent student, $33 million in total, which is in addition to $56 million in cuts over the past three years. In the governor's budget, the state-operated institutions were cut $150 million, added to $619 million over the past three years. I do not make this request lightly. I understand full well the constraints on New York's finances in this economic environment. However, I feel strongly that we owe it to all of our constituents, especially our students, faculty, and staff, <laughs> to advocate for this reinvestment. Over the last 48 years, SUNY has been allowed to raise tuition only 13 times. The smallest tuition increase was 7%, $310, in 09-10. The highest increase was 43%, $650, in 1991 92 17 times since 1963, a first-year student entered SUNY and during the, their college career either never had to pay a tuition increase or, as others saw it, two or three increases in a single college career. SUNY needs a tuition policy that is fair, predictable, and responsible. Fair because it protects access and affordability, predictable because it allows students and families to be planful over a five-year period, and responsible because all of it is invested in completion. I know we put a lot on the table today. It is no small task to run the nation's largest state university and is no small responsibility for you, the state it serves. 
There will always be spirited discussions around the best way to move the university forward. But in the end, everyone in this room wants the best possible system of public higher education for New York State. We have always sent revenues back to the campuses when they generated income from commercialization and tech transfer. We will continue to do that, only if we think these hubs will facilitate that. We think the hubs will create jobs, and we're working diligently to actually speculate on a number of jobs through these tech transfer hubs. We hope to link these hubs to the governor's plan for regional economic development councils in the 10 regions of the state so that we can uh, employ more people, create more jobs, and send revenues back to the campuses. The point being made about access and completion really challenges the assumption that what SUNY really needs to do is just make sure its doors are wide open. Because once a student comes to campus two or four year, they come with an expectation that they will be able to take courses in their major and complete their degree. Let me just say that um, we are trying to run this university system in a way that guarantees that when students come to our campuses, they can get the degrees <coughs> they expect. So access is a two-pronged uh, relationship between getting in and having it available to you at an affordable price and graduating and going to work. There is a national movement because of the decline in state support to privatize public universities. This is totally anathema to us. This is not our direction. We are a public university. We've got to figure this out. But in other states, the immense reduction in state support has caused them to talk about this notion of privatization. We do not. We will not. We should not. All six points that I concluded with in my testimony are, in essence, UB 2020. We must have procurement flexibility. We must learn to create public-private partnerships within the parameters of the questions raised today to get the job done. That's how Western New York is going to thrive. That's how we're going to thrive. Uh, the whole notion of the balance between the thing called maintenance of effort and the thing called a uh, predictable, uh, responsible, and fair tuition policy over a five-year period, just like a construction fund, is going to give you immense opportunity in Western New York. And we think that we have examples in each of those pockets to say how it would work. I will say that in our uh, so-called rational tuition planning. We want to find a way that, that you can do what you did for construction in being more planful for our students and for our university. <coughs> so I have to say that the components of UB 2020 are perfectly aligned with the, the budget needs that I have articulated that we are discussing. And I think particularly in public-private partnerships, which is a big part of the sort of development side of UB 2020, this is where uh, there is immense opportunity for communities. Uh, the consequences for uh, downstate medical were an expansion of our ability to provide our clinical activities and to serve the patient requirements of that community, which are serious. The consequences to the Long Island Community Hospital, as we read in the paper, may be even more serious in terms of closing their doors. So. Uh, we, as I said before, and we truly mean this, we will work with the executive branch to try to better understand what's at play here.